Wait. We're back. Yeah. We're back on another one. I don't even want. <laughs> I don't even want to know. Yeah. Okay, so you can't you can't smell this at home, but DC just walked into the studio with a 32 ounce Nalgene bottle filled with what looks like liquid salad. <laughs> it's kale, ginger, huge piece of ginger, about the size of my thumb. Uh, let's see what else was in here. Blueberries. Mm. Spinach. Okay. What else? Chia seeds. Tell tell the people what you're doing. Trying to go plant based. Okay. You know we talked about Rich Roll. What's up, Rich? What's up, Rich? Uh, great podcast. But I'm trying to go plant based because I'm trying to get into these 32s yeah. size 32 waist, and so uh, I'm trying to eat more and more plants. I but talked to you yesterday. Yesterday was. Tuesday, off a long weekend. Mm -hmm. You said you only ate plant-based the whole weekend. I was feeling good. And you felt great. Yeah. Turmeric also in here. Oh, turmeric's supposed to be good for you. Oh, yeah. Wonder drug. I heard that works for like, uh, you know, sore muscles. Yep. Inflammation. A couple of almonds. I love it. Let's go. This is what I'm drinking here. 32 ounces. So, so, uh, pardon if you're listening and you hear some crunching. (laughs) <laughs> that's that's some bits of kale. Yeah, I got to tell you, the face he made wasn't wasn't really like this mm. was a raving review. All right, I'm charged <laughs> up. I'm ready for you. All right, so here's what we're going to talk about today. This is something I haven't prepped you about, haven't told you about, but we talk about it all the time. I finally want to record this. It is why we've made the decision to invest so much in brand. Mm-hmm. Ooh, mm. and we got books here. Why we made the decision to invest so much in brand. I want to hear your take on this. I have a bunch of notes. Mm. I help guide us. But basically, like, this is something you and Elias pushed on since day one, since starting the company. is like, whatever we build, we brand is going to be such an important thing. Mm -hmm. Why? Check out the brand right there. Always be learning. Always be learning. Love that. Uh, By the way, if you hear a little side commentary, all these things, it's because we're on YouTube. So... If you can't, if you're just listening, that's cool. When you get home, go to YouTube. You'll mm-hmm. see all these videos. Subscribe, here. hit yeah. that subscribe. You can button. see, hit subscribe. You we can actually subs. see the green juice. You'll yep, be able to on see YouTube it. and right. Facebook Live. Follow so, us on Facebook. So, what's the deal with with brand? Like, and and you you have always done B two B like marketing companies. Who mm-hmm. cares? What what does brand matter? Yeah, it didn't before, but we were dealing. So we're in this transition transitionary time, right? So we were mostly in the early days of SaaS, we were dealing in the world of commodities, Mm -hmm. right? So we were building commoditized things, uh, but there was scarcity in the system because there weren't many alternatives, many competitors. It was novel for someone like Salesforce to to be the first kind of SaaS CRM, and they were able to stand alone and build a, build a brand doing that because they were the only ones. They didn't have, like the, we would have today, hundreds, if not thousands, of CRM competitors. Crazy. So brand investment didn't matter. It just mattered that they yeah. actually built the product and that they were able to deliver the product to market. Yeah, or like if you go back to old school Al Reese marketing, mm-hmm. right? One of his laws of marketing is there's two ways to be first. You can either be first to the market, like physically be first, mm-hmm. or you can be first in somebody's mind. Exactly. And so most businesses, to your point, focus just let's be first. To the mar- if you're first to the market, then you own it. Exactly, because there was no competition in the market. You were the only one. You were unique in terms of coming to the market. That's a very different time in it, from today where we're dealing with – needing to be in that second phase yeah. as described by Aris, which is you come into any given market, any given niche is probably a couple, if not tens, if and not hundreds of competitors. Literally, go, go to product go, go to product on. This is my favorite thing to, to say. is like go to product on on any given day mm-hmm. and click on a new product that's gotten a 500 upvotes and a million comments and just scroll. And the second or third comment mm-hmm. is always going to be, yeah, well, this is cool, but how is this different than X, right? Exactly. It's always going to be mm-hmm, that way. Mm-hmm. It's impossible to create a new product today. And, and that's, the time that, that's the time that we're living in today. And so in that time, you need to invest in that second area that Aris mentioned, which is developing – uh, the f- being first in the mind of the customer. And we do that by investing a lot in brand, which wasn't a topic for most B2B companies. Still isn't a topic for most B2B companies. We're pretty pretty alone in, in that woods. Yeah. Uh, but you see it in the B2C side. You see it in all the consumer packaged good companies. You see it in all the electronic companies. You see it in every other type of company that sells to sells a product or service. They focus on brand. We're missing that in the B2B side. And we think it's some something that will help us stand out yeah. in the mind of the customer. And I think the thing that you said is interesting, right? We're here talking about this. This is what we're doing. But I would say still 99% of the companies in the B2B space 
aren't doing that. Mm-hmm. And I think the reason why, I think the other thing also has to do with free. Yep. So when you combine brand with free, that's how you really like, you know, the, that's one plus one equals three is when you take those things and combine them. Yeah, I think the other thing that's happened uh, and the reason that brand is so important is that is the explosion of number of channels that your brand or your product needs to be on, right? Yeah. And so like, again, going back 10 years ago and where you could just stand out, be the only competitor or one of very few competitors in a market and you only had to worry about basically getting traffic from Google or a search engine. So you spend a lot of time on SEO or SEM, you know, in the form of AdWords. You spend time on maybe your email campaigns or direct mail campaigns. But now you as a company, as a brand, need to be need to stand out on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Google, uh, you know, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, like yeah. Twitter, et cetera, like a million different channel, uh, channels out there. And so you need to develop that brand that's going to stand out and be different on all of those channels. And it's good. I'm glad you brought up all those all those channels. I, I wouldn't have taken it there, but I think that's an interesting point because because of all those channels today, you have to show yourself, right? Like you have to show what you really are like as a mm-hmm. business and as a company. And so it's really hard to hide yep. if you're on platforms like video and audio and, you know, a little bit easier if like your only channels are blogging and sales reps. Yeah, but look at us today. We need to be like... In the form of books, <laughs> right here. Yeah, we publish it. We oh. we self publish our own book. Mm-hmm. We have a podcast. We have a YouTube channel. We spend time on social, Instagram, everything. Snapchat, yeah. uh, YouTube, mm-hmm. etc. Twitter. Yeah, the uh, first. I mean, the first two. Basically, so there's four people on the marketing team, and uh, two of them are designers, mm-hmm. right? And like that was the reason we made that decision. Yep, we have our blog. We're on Medium. We're on a gazillion different channels that we need to stand out on. And when you're doing that, you need to invest in brand. What's your brand story across all those things? What's the reason we buy experiences today? We don't buy, we don't, we don't pay a premium for commodities. And we're coming out of a market that was just totally focused on how do you manufacture and how do you build the best and cheapest commodity. And we're buying, we're moving to a new time where we value brands, niches, and experiences. Now you got me all jump, jumping in my seat right oh, now. You moving. said it. You said we buy experiences, right? But people don't think – people haven't thought of B2B like that. Uh, go go more on that for a second. Like what's an example? Just even personally, what's the experience that you that mm, – Every day. See, I'm drinking this green juice here. Yeah. I'm, I'm buying an experience. I bought some of these veggies at an experience place, which is Whole Foods yep. or, my, or my local grocer, mm-hmm. a combination of the two. Mm-hmm. And, you know, is the stuff that I bought there – Different? I'd argue that it is different than, let's say, Market Basket or the other supermarket supermarket that I may visit. But I put a premium on not only the ingredients and the things that I buy there, but the way that those stores make me feel uh, when I shop there. From everything from coming into the store to the way that they communicate to the way that things are shown and surfaced in that store, I'm willing to pay a premium for that experience that goes beyond the commoditized uh, item that I'm yeah. going to be buying. There. And that's the thing. And this, the thing is like, and this all applies to, to the business world today, because like if you're providing, if you have that experience and that experience is shitty, mm-hmm. guess what's going to happen? Mm-hmm. You're going to take two steps in the store, mm-hmm. see that there's a bunch of stuff spilled on the floor. It smells terrible. There's no service and you're going to walk out yep. and you're going to go next door. That's harder to do in person. It's so easy to do online. Like we've, I've used this example before, but I was trying to buy some webinar software. Mm-hmm. They already had my credit card. I was trying to upgrade, and in order to do so, I had to call sales. Mm-hmm. So I even called. I left them a voicemail. I didn't hear back for a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that company and that motion that they were running there is was based and created on a time where they were selling a commodity. It didn't matter. I, had to, call, I had, the, had to call them. Absolutely. So it was their rules. So they could put some crappy contact forms on there, make you jump through hoops, and uh, put all the work onto you as a customer. Because what they were selling was so scarce and unique that they had all the power. But the power is transitioned to us, the consumer and the customer, and we have all the power now. And so businesses need to make that transition. Totally. And I mean, you were just talking about webinar software, for example. We A month ago, you and I were in New York, and we got off the plane at JFK. Mm-hmm. And the whole terminal, JetBlue in, in JFK, was just blanketed with Zoom Yeah, Zoom.us. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. Same business model. They have enterprise plan. Yep. Their enterprise plan starts at $2,000 a month, mm-hmm. right? It's $19 for a minimum of 100 seats for sales reps yep. uh, that want to use it. 
But then they have a free model. Mm -hmm. And so what they've done is they didn't just say it's free, but they've layered on this brand as on top of it. And so that's why you see their ad. That's Mm -hmm. why you used to get off the plane in San Francisco and you'd see the MailChimp monkey, right? Yeah. That's why you see all the stuff that Slack is investing. Oh, Oh, slow down, dude. Oh. How is Zoom going to measure the effectiveness (laughs) of those billboards? I don't know. Maybe they have like UTM uh, parameters on the billboard. Oh, okay. No, okay, they go. have a QR code. QR code? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're going to measure it? See, no, I'm, glad, I'm glad you mentioned that because this is exactly, the, this is exactly what people are going to ask. Mm-hmm. And if you're asking that question, then you're thinking about it wrong. Woo! And it's true. Look, that right? was a quote. If you're, th- you're thinking about it wrong. Mm-hmm. This is something that we talk about all the time. Yeah. And guess what? I can measure how much our brand is having impact on our business. We hear it every day. It's not going to be, you have to be okay with the fact that it's not going to be this perfect Google Analytics report that you're going to get used to. With no leakage. With, yeah, w- right. And but, but if you want that business, then you can go build a traditional, you know, everything is super measurable business. Mm-hmm. And that's not to say that we don't measure anything. We are more analytical than anybody else I've ever been around. Mm-hmm. Um, but we care about the right things. Yep. Uh, and so, and also we're able to look at things like, how has word of mouth grown over time, right? Mm-hmm. By looking at, you know, our traffic sources. Or we're able to look at uh, the virality of our free product, which keeps compounding. And that's the number one thing. And th- this all goes back to, you know, the type, the business model where the reason MailChimp grew so fast, among many reasons that we've talked about on this podcast, is they had millions of people sending emails. And each one of those emails in the footer, it said, sent by MailChimp. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or Zendesk or Envision or... Yeah. Dropbox or any of these examples, right? They're all examples of the same thing, which is the power of marrying that free kind of trial, that free experience, which we had for years in the offline world, right? It's called free samples. Free Come samples. Into the store, Go get a to free Costco, sample. get some cheese. Get some cheese, free samples. And, uh, and then they layered on the business or the enterprise versions of those plans for people who self-selected into needing those capabilities. And yeah. we think that's the future, whether it's a product that you manufacture or a piece of software that you build or a service that you provide. Totally. I think you go look at look at any business and there's some version of free. Mm-hmm. And the reason that it has to happen is because everybody's expectations are, wait, 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 wait. no, no, no. I, I get all this. I get all the, I get everything you're saying, but I need to use it. I need to use it for myself. Yep. Right. It's why we have free. It's why we also have a free trial. It's why so many B2B SaaS companies that didn't used to offer free trials or free versions of their product now have to do that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because they know people will just go somewhere else. Yeah, and the the other alternative that exists out there is to build such a powerful brand like an Apple where you'd never have to give anything away for free right? and it's just built on word of mouth, but that's a brand that's been built over decade after decade after decade. And, uh, and I don't know about you, but uh, yeah. most companies are an Apple. Well, one thing before, before we, we finish up, I want to mention, I just want to go back to the whole, like, how will you measure it thing mm-hmm. for a second. Wow, I hit a nerve. Yeah, you hit a nerve. Here, here's how we measure it. I don't know what this means, but at least five times a day, some combination of people on our team get an email saying, we love what you're doing. We read this thing. We use the product. We, we listen to this podcast. We watch this video. Uh, we, we had this sales call. And somebody emails us indirect and just out of the blue says, I just wanted to let you guys know. Or they give us an MPS response that has that. Or they say it on Twitter. Or they say it in our email. And so or I think, a five-star review. Or a five-star review. Okay. 210 five-star reviews okay, okay, okay. to be specific. But like you don't have to get – I don't know how that's translating into customers and traffic, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But it's one of those things where sometimes you have to just believe in your gut a little bit and say this is, this is why we're doing this. This is the right reason. Yeah. So if you, if you believe in what we're talking about, mm-hmm. if you also value brand, leave us a comment when you leave that five-star review today. I only like five-star review. Just leave the comment. We read all of them. Dave and I read them religiously. Leave us a comment there. Shout us out and we'll, we'll get back to you. Yeah. And what I'm going to start doing – which I haven't told Dave about, Uh-oh. I surprised Dave on the podcast, Uh-oh. is uh, I'm going to start having giveaways for people who, random giveaways for people who leave five-star reviews. It's not a five-star, you know, whatever review you want, yeah. you know. But five right stars. now we only have five stars. Uh, so, you know. <laughs> don't be the first one. Don't be the first one. Uh, so anyone who leaves a review for people who subscribe to our Twitter, our YouTube channel, and our our facebook page i'm going to be randomly selecting someone uh, every other week to send the surprise gift to. 
I can't. You guys, that's servant leadership at its finest servant right lead. there. So it's random. Yeah. I'm going to be picking from subscribers or yep. reviewers. Random gift. Can't yep. wait to send you out a little special care package from D.C. Don't worry. It won't be this bottle of green juice right here. <laughs> <laughs> and look, you could be like uh, Pinkham Ryan, uh, who wrote this five-star review a couple days ago. I can't tell you how many times there's been an issue my team has been trying to solve, and that exact topic came up on an episode of Seeking Wisdom. I'm part of a team that's trying to build a new business of SaaS tools, and Seeking Wisdom is constantly providing insight to help us make tough decisions or inspiring us to try the new. So. Shout out to, to Pinkham Ryan. That was amazing. And if you're building a product or a SaaS Ryan? tool and you want to get free publicity on this podcast, just leave your company Man. name in a review. Right. We'll True. Shout you so out. I know Ryan Pinkham. Used to work with him at Constant Contact back in the day. Now I'm shouting him out. What's up, Ryan? Yeah. Put your re- If you put something, put your Twitter handle in there. We'll get yeah. you some love. We'll get you some love. We'll get you some subscribers. All right. So that's thinking about brand. All right. Let's shout it out to Amy who got us on YouTube. Thanks, Amy. Good, uh, Facebook Live. We're blowing up. We got books. We got videos. We have hundreds of five-star reviews. Hundreds. Go to drift.com slash hypergrowth and mm-hmm. you can get the free book too. Also, let me know if you're a plant-based like I'm trying to go. Yeah. Give me some tips. I'm interested in this. Help him out. Get inspiration. All right. We're out. We're out.